Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, welcome to this uh, special meeting of the Board of Examiners, uh, where all these students, soon to be our former students, will receive their diploma today. Um, so welcome to all of our students and welcome to the family members and friends and whoever else you brought to this nice uh, ceremony. Um, my name is Guy Plasky. I'm the chairman of uh, the Board of Directors. And next to me is uh, Peter Schroeder, who you probably know. He's uh, at the moment interim director of the program. And we also still have Kai Mikkelsen, who is the former director of the program. And he will um, <laughs> say a few words to you to start this uh, session. Kai. Yeah, dear former bachelor students, nice to see you again at first. Perfect. Uh, many things will change. One thing will not change. You will always remain a kind of a beppy or something like that. So this is uh, what we are here for today. Um, a couple of, of years with highly motivated study efforts come to an end. And this is the reason why we are here to celebrate you and your efforts on this very nice day. The mission is nearly completed when we talk about studying bachelor program. <laughs> um, some of you are still in Maastricht, I think. Some of you already left. Um, you just heard that I'm the former coordinator, so I also left. So I think we are all a little bit in a similar mood today. We are looking forward. There are new things to come, but we are maybe also looking back a little bit uh, in a way that we think, OK, the time in Maastricht or with the bachelor program or with the students was not so bad. And it's absolutely clear today there's the day where you will meet for the last time with such a huge amount of ex-colleagues and students or something like that. And it's a little bit similar for me that I'm also glad that I can be here to meet you, but also some former colleagues, that we can now see what will happen. Um, nevertheless, so before you get then the, the license for European public health or something like that, uh, let's think a little bit about the... Uh, past, present, future of European public health, and that means also to talk a little bit about um, Europe again. Um, I do not know if you uh, heard this, so I will work in Fulda. For the people in uh, Germany, they know that Fulda is a very important place if you want to switch trains. <laughs> it's, a, it's a major train station. Um, but it's also very close to the former border to the German Democratic Republic. And uh, today there's also a public holiday in Germany, the unification of uh, the former Federal Republic of Germany and the German Democratic Republic. So it's a special day. And for me, um, when I started to study in 89, um, there was the situation that there was this surprise, surprising process for me that there was unification. And um, for me, this was always also linked a little bit. It's not only an isolated German phenomenon but Europe changed. And for me, the German unification has a lot to do with European integration, cooperation and integration across Europe. And um, at the same time, we know that today many people are very critical with the European Union, with the process of European integration, and some of them even want to leave the European Union. And um, two days ago, there was a nice article or interesting article, inspiring article by a former... Um, Minister of Foreign Affairs in Germany, Joschka Fischer, and he wrote about the Brexit. And he said, okay, there are so many arguments about the negative or eventual negative consequences, economic consequences of the Brexit, but the argumentation is not good because the people who want to leave the European Union, they have a vision. They don't think in economic terms. They have just another vision about their future. In uh, the UK, maybe then also, I don't know, to go back to Commonwealth structures, to be more autonomous again, whatever. And the economic arguments do not really count so much in the debate. For me, that was a little bit strange because I'm very much for European cooperation and integration. We can criticize the way we can talk about the details, but for historical reasons, for technical reasons or something like that, I think there are many good arguments for European cooperation and integration. We can start with the two world wars, we can start to talk about <coughs> peace and war, we can 
talk about um, the defense of human rights, democratic rights. This is also not very often the case in Europe and in, um, in, in the world. We can talk about globalization and economic dimensions and needs for integration. And when we have more economic integration, then we need also political regulation. And we have also to deal with social consequences of economic integration in Europe. Therefore, I'm very much in favor for Europe, and I think that there are rational terms. But again, I can only say that I like Europe. I think especially also for a country like Germany, there's no way not to think in European terms. It would be a risk not to do so. And I think that there are rational reasons. But what does it mean now for the program? And when I started to, to reflect about this, then I, I thought, OK, my heart beats for Europe. Maybe I have also European vision. But when I think in terms of European public health, then I had always a little bit more technical approach to European public health. So for me, European public health is a consequence of European integration, but it's not the vision of European public health. And that was maybe a problem. So when we talked about European public health, we know that it's very important. We have European public health as an answer of European integration. We think about the Medcow disease, we think about cross-border threats when it comes to public health. We have a market for products, that means consumer protection. We talk about uh, rare diseases and the advantages cooperation in Europe can bring. So when it, we talk about access to medical services. We talk about research projects in the areas of medical devices, pharmaceutical products, and so on, and that it's better to do this in cooperation with neighbors across Europe. So there are many good things to be for Europe, but these are rational arguments, and there are sometimes also a little bit a, a functional logic behind it. We talked a little bit about, okay, when we have more integration, then there are functional spillover effects leading to more integration. So that was a little bit my personal approach to the situation. And now, I think that this was wrong. So there is not an automatic spillover effect. There are not functional needs for more integration. There might be the situation that we easily have less integration in future. And for me, this is problematic. So what to do? So in the very end, I simply think that when we talk about the program, and today, when I in the beginning said the mission is accomplished or something like that, then I really think it's the mission of studying the Bachelor in European Public Health. And regardless where we go to in future, there's still something to do. So we have to be aware that there is a mission. And the mission has something to do on the one hand to reflect about the needs of cooperation, cross-border cooperation, maybe not only European, but cross-border cooperation and European integration. But we maybe should also work a little bit on the question, can we link public health and can we link European public health with the development of a strong vision for the future? which also supports those who are in favor of European cooperation and integration, so that we can also contribute a little bit to that. That was what I wanted to say today at the very beginning, because we will leave. But nevertheless, the most important thing is that we are here to hand over your certificates and to celebrate this day. So have fun, and um, let's have a nice day, and let's talk hopefully after this part of the story at the reception in a couple of hours. <laughs> Thank you. Don't run away too quickly, Kai. This is about you, the graduates. But one word of thank you for all your commitment to the EPH program, particularly to the Bachelor. And we have a little present for you to take a little bit of Maastricht to Fulda. Thanks, Kai. Thank you very much. Thank you, Kai. Don't forget about us. Come back once in a while. I will call you if the program is running wild or something wrong is happening. OK, so um, I noticed that uh, Kai didn't run away very far uh, because the first group was also uh, supervised by Kai Mikkelsen. And the students I would like to come forward are uh, Chris Harper, Claire Ianizzi, Eva Papa Constantinou, Louise Schluter, Salina Lin, and Camilla Schulko. Yes, yeah, I said, great to see you again. 
Um, I think we, all of the supervisors, worked together with their students for at least seven months, and um, that was really a nice time for me. Um, we have not seen now for two months at least or something like that, so I hope that we can talk a little bit later where you're going to, what you're doing now. I would be very much interested in that, but now I have two minutes' time to introduce you to the audience and to address you a little bit. So let's maybe just start with that and maybe just start with uh, the three of you who had uh, a placement at um, DG Santé units, at different units, but um, that somehow fits together. Um, Salina, Lin, you um, worked during your placement also for the thesis on, on a question. So we have countries and countries should do their best to identify good practice in the field of public health, health promotion, non-communicable diseases, whatever, prevention, and to make sure that this good practice is also implemented. In Europe, we have also the situation that some countries have a little bit further developed structures than others, and it would be good to support countries and develop respective structures. And you, you worked in your thesis on that topic, and that was really nice to see what you made out of it, so congratulations for that. And what is very close to that, too, is that uh, Claire Janitzi. So when we have identified good practice, then it would be good to disseminate the practice across Europe. And therefore, we need ideas how to organize the transfer. And we need to transfer plans. And um, countries should also be aware what they should take into account before they start to think about the implementation of something that is coming from another country. And this is something what you worked upon also. Thank you for that. And then we have Louis Schlüter. And you worked on organ transplantation issues. That means, in principle, you could have made use of the topics of your colleagues, to think how to identify examples of good practice, how to organize the transfer, and de facto this was also something what the working group you were um, involved in the placement period, what also was working upon to, to make sure that good practice develops in Europe. And in your paper, you, you figured out in the very end that currently the situation between countries differ, that the priorities of the countries differ, and that raises also some questions about the European strategies to support countries in all the different, uh, with all the different priorities. So that was your topic. So also, thank you very much for this. This was the GZ Santé unit. And then uh, there were also students and uh, they did an internal placement. So we met also here in, in Maastricht. And um, Eva, you worked on Greece. <laughs> so... <laughs> You know that there was an economic crisis, we remember this 10 years ago, and uh, very much has been written about the health-related consequences of the economic crisis, and a lot has been written about mental health-related issues. And the idea for um, EFA's project was simply to compare. So what do we discuss in theory about economic crisis and the impacts on health? What do we know from older studies, where is evidence and what was not evidence? and what has been studied on Greece. So what has been studied, what has not been studied, where our assumptions have been confirmed or not. So that was also a nice literature review. Thank you very much. And Christopher Harper. So you worked on um, agricultural policies. So this is uh, also not unusual for, for public health that we also think about food and nutrition. And you know that in the European Union, much, of, much money is spent on uh, agricultural policies and the starting point was that now with the Brexit there would be maybe new budget negotiations with consequences also for the agricultural policy field. So windows of opportunity to rethink a little bit agricultural policies and um, Christopher used this idea to th reflect about eventual windows of opportunity to think about stakeholders and uh, their, their impact and their uh, yeah, policy entrepreneurs and there are ways to create influence, to try to create influence on the right framing of the policy in economic terms, in public health terms, in environmental terms, in whatever. That was comparatively fast, right? And there was a sixth person, and unfortunately, Visa cannot be with us today, but I hope that he has a healthy time at the Finnish army. <laughs> the winter is coming. <laughs> so, that's, also, think about that. Yeah, thank you very much for... Uh, the time and hope to talk later and
The next group was supervised by Milena Pavlova and also one student by Wim Groot. And that is Margarita Belichowska, Slavena Manolova and Irina Zuza. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm extremely happy to be present at this uh, ceremony and to be able to personally congratulate uh, Margarita, Slovena and Irina. I know that I say this over and over again, but uh, it is absolute delight to work with uh, students from the European uh, uh, Public Health Program, with the Bachelor European Public Health Program, and this year was no exception. Um, so let me say something personal about the um, studies. So Margarita and Elena, uh, Ir Irina, you are really fresh uh, uh, bachelor European public health uh, graduate, or at least you are going to be in a few minutes. Um, I'm sure that you had uh, extremely good moments in this uh, a bachelor program. I can always see this in the breaks between tutorials. Uh, uh, it is really, I always thought it would be nice to be part of this um, family. Uh, a bachelor study is indeed uh, uh, a forgettable journey and it prepares you for uh, important uh, future achievements for future endeavors. And I'm sure you are going to have many of them uh, in the future. But this is, in fact, your first uh, great academic achievement. And I believe you will have many of them. Uh, and there will be many more to come. In your bachelor thesis, you are part of a bigger group supervised by three supervisors. Also, Ilinka was part of it, but she will uh, get her uh, speech later. Uh, so, Irina and uh, Margarita, you have been uh, part of the this is groups that they focus on uh, maternal care in Europe. Maternal care is an extremely important topic in Europe, although it might be kind of overlooked because of the very good uh, maternal care indicators uh, compared to other parts of the world. I mean, we all know about the high maternal, uh, maternal mortality in uh, African countries, in Asian countries, why would someone really study maternal care in Europe? We all know that 99% uh, of the women, they, have, uh, they uh, deliver with uh, pr professional assistance. There are enough uh, uh, maternal care center hospitals all over Europe. Why is, so big, uh, why is this a uh, big problem? But as your empirical studies show, obviously, there is a problem, oh, especially from the perspective of Bulgarian and Moldovian women, which you explore. I must say that you uh, took the difficult way to the uh, uh, bachelor thesis. You did not choose for the standard literature review, but you actually uh, organize, set up, and prepare your own uh, empirical study. You collected your own data. And this, uh, uh, this uh, uh, I think, uh, shows uh, your uh, motivation and your uh, eagerness to uh, study the topic. So uh, your study actually showed that women are not, in these two countries at least, uh, they are not that satisfied with maternal care. Of course, there are, there are enough uh, uh, midwives, enough obst obstetricians, but they do not always get the attention. They do not get the right attitude. There are quality problems. There are shortages of materials. So in the absence of good, good governance, which is one of the problems in uh, many uh, Eastern European countries, women are left with nothing else than to uh, secure themselves the right quality care. And as we can see, they do that through um, informal payments, through connections. Uh, so they, they employ the so-called alternative politics in the absence of governance. Your recommendations point to these problems. And I uh, hope that your results will reach uh, policymakers in this country so that there is more attention, more investment to the problem. 
And we will help you to do that because we plan to go a step further and uh, uh, publish the results and uh, uh, disseminate them further at a policy level because uh, uh, really there is, it is the problem of maternal care, uh, access to maternal care is uh, uh, a kind of hidden problem in the public health area in Europe. I would like uh, to uh, tell the audience more about your work about your hard work and about your inspiring results. At least uh, I think that uh, they will be, uh, uh, you have done a uh, very good quality of work, but uh, unfortunately my time is limited. So uh, let me just wish you to enjoy the day. And uh, I, I want to extend my uh, congratulations here also to your relatives and friends uh, who are here to celebrate with you. Uh, and uh, I want to wish that you grab tomorrow all the new opportunities they come on the way. And I do not doubt uh, that there will be such opportunity given the, your skills and your uh, qualities developed in this uh, program. So enjoy the day and success in future. Congratulations. <clears throat>
Um, the next group was supervised by uh, Elena Ambrosino, and I would like to invite um, the students, Bashair al Yohar, Helene Arup, Rachelle of Rachelle Adamoli, Timo Kelman, and Ziyoda Rakimova. Um, good afternoon. Hi. Uh, it's a pleasure for me to be here. I'm um, very happy to be here again for another graduation. Uh, I enjoyed very much working with uh, your team. There is just one member missing, but uh, it was quite interesting and challenging organizing our meetups and Skype sessions from a time up to four different locations and up to three different countries. So that was interesting. Um, let me just address each one of you, Elena, since you're in the far left. Um, uh, your work was on uh, pollution and health in Europe, looking at epigenetic uh, uh, evidence in reaching the SDGs agenda. Uh, you showed commitment and motivation throughout your work, uh, and uh, you were able to work very independently as well as contribute uh, um, in a constructive way to the group process. Um, you provide a useful insight to all the other words, and I'm very happy the way uh, you worked, and I wish you all the best for your future career. I'm pretty sure if you approach it in the same, with the same mindset, it'll be uh, successful. Thank you. Uh, Zioda, uh, your work on uh, um, uh, refugees, mental health strategies uh, in Lebanon and in EU was very relevant uh, in this uh, uh, period. Um, I enjoyed very much working with you. You were very commit committed and motivated. Um, your, uh, as I said, your research was ever more relevant uh, in a, uh, on a very uh, important topic uh, right now. Um, and I, will, I hope the, your input will be picked up all through uh, 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 via the collaborators you work with, uh, will be picked up in the public health field. Um, he also contributed uh, um, very well and constructively to the group process, so I thank you for that. <laughs> Raquel, that's the right pronunciation, I can <laughs> uh, say it. Uh, your work was again on uh, refugees' health, this time on health indicators of uh, refugees in uh, uh, European countries, with a main focus in, in, on Italy. Um, it was uh, a pleasure uh, working with you. you. You showed a great deal of uh, um, uh, commitment. You were very um, detail-oriented, and um, you strive to analyze and reanalyze your data as much as possible. But uh, um, uh, overall, your, uh, your um, uh, work and results were very nice. I'm very proud of that, and I hope also that will contribute to this uh, ever more uh, relevant topic in public health in Europe now. Thank you. And uh, finally, Timo, um, thank you for your contribution as well to our group process. You worked on uh, um, epigenetics, evidence, and nutrition on uh, um, uh, European individuals' health. Um, you worked on a complex topic, uh, and at the time you really had to get out of your comfort zone and kind of navigate through the basic scientific evidence uh, um, that you can find related to the topic on micronutrients and human health and epigenetic evidence related to that. Um, so I, I believe you showed the ability to kind of filter through all the basic scientific evidence and uh, um, incorporate that in, into your work. Um, I hope you'll, sh you'll demonstrate the this flexibility also in your future work, and I'm sure that's gonna go to your advantage. So thank you as well.
next group was supervised by David Town and, and David Shaw. And students are Chloe Butler, Eva Folger, and Sami Adnan. Nice to see you all again. Uh, marvellous. I think it's a great blessing as a supervisor to have a great team of students to work with. And uh, this year for David Shaw and myself, this was no exception. In fact, a great year. Much better than all the other years. But then you know you were much better than all the other years. But don't tell them. Don't, anyway, right. You're, you worked on exciting public health issues, current public health issues, and you had great motivation and commitment. Uh, individually, Chloe, you worked on uh, the participation of older people in healthy aging policy of the WHO European Healthy Cities Network. So you were able to use your placement at the WHO to get tons of interesting information. Um, and you worked, for me, you worked really, really well here in Maastricht. It was brilliant. Uh, you were self-sufficient, which is always a good thing, uh, really uh, building on lots of ideas and theories. I loved the way you worked with the, the, the ideas from Habermas, which is not, uh, not, not a usual track to, to go down with for students. And it was so solid scholarship. And I hope you take that as a real compliment, because I still count solid scholarship as a brilliant thing. Um, your placement supervisor at WHO was so full of praise for your work, for your organisation and creativity, your willingness to learn, your maturity, uh, to think and act professionally and ethically. It was a really good placement, a really great report. So, well done. Brilliant work. <laughs> Eva, you worked with one of our uh, bachelor and master's graduates, uh, Kevin which shows there is life after all of this. This is so exciting. Um, uh, in the German Pharmaceutical Industry Association. And you looked at questions around the implementation of EU legislation on counterfeit drugs in Germany. So it's a really interesting and difficult public health problem to look at. Again, you were a great... Uh, scholar and a great student. You worked really hard independently. You worked uh, really well on this. Uh, but, and your diligence and hard work here was mirrored by what the Institute said of you. They said you were uh, performing all tasks to our great satisfaction, supporting the office in a range of tasks, uh, integrating quickly and well, and then the lovely line, will be truly missed. So let's hope that converts into some sort of future job or something. That would be really nice, wouldn't it? But anyway, that, but then it really good. So congratulations on your great achievement as well. Well done. Now, uh, Sammy, you worked on that most elusive of things that for about 20 years people have been talking about how can we create dynamic consent and there have been all sorts of papers and I've been guilty of this that have said oh well it would be great if we had dynamic consent. Uh, well you actually worked on how we might be able to do this. Uh, David Shaw wrote the following, you showed great dedication in your, I won't do the accent, he's from Glasgow, nobody would have <laughs> You showed great dedication in your work and your design of a privacy framework for health data using artificial intelligence and dynamic consent was inspiring. It was a pleasure to supervise you and I wish you all the best for the future. David expresses this really very well. Uh, the work, uh, like everyone's of course, is timely and important and your knowledge of both the law and ethics and the data science uh, brought together with uh, great originality and vigour really produced something that I think is a step forward in the field. So congratulations for that. It is worth also saying that during this time you were able to forge great links with Mike Parker's group in, in Oxford and your work in setting up a, a new student study group with colleagues here was, was really showing the quality and, of your character and your commitment. So really well done. To all three of you, I say from David Shaw and myself, thank you for being a great thesis group. Congratulations on your great achievement today in graduating and all good wishes for your future. Well done.
The next group is a large group supervised by uh, Timo Clemens. And I would like, like to ask to come forward uh, Diana Laune, Frida Klein Hazebroek, Isabel Klemme, Leon Wagenbrenner, Lina Plunske, Niklas Zepkowski, Mona Giesen and Julius Kessler. Now it gets cozy here. Huh? <laughs> First, before I address all of you, uh, it makes me really proud to see the entire batch uh, going with me through this journey uh, for a year, I think. Uh, I just delivered the introduction le lecture to the next cohort already, so it's uh, really nice, and congratulations to every one of you. But now I would like to address uh, my groups, and I will start with those who've waited the, the longest for receiving uh, um, the diploma. So, Julius, you did an internal inter internship here in Maastricht in the context of the Interreg project on uh, rare disease collaboration in the Origio Mars Rhine. Your thesis was focused on the impact of care needs for parents caring for children that have a rare disease. You really impressed me in one of the first sessions in, in January when you came back studying your literature saying, I found the perfect article to answer my research question. Which I thought, oh, great. But then the next sentence was, I think my research question is answered. So I need to think about a new one. And you really find a new one for the next session. So that really demonstrated to me how you can think academically um, and your capabilities, and you adapted very fine. Your work was based on a narrative literature review. You distilled the interaction effects between the various care needs um, of parents caring for children with a rare disease. And you indicated as well that you are determined to continue your work in the area of uh, rare diseases. And because we haven't seen for a long while, I understood from the partners in the Interrank project, uh, from the VSOP, that you are still around uh, and, and determined to work on. Excellent work, congratulations. <laughs> Lina, you worked uh, as well on an internal placement on the impact of teamwork and leadership on patient safety and quality. Um, such kind of what I would call wider context factors for the improvement of patient safety and quality are more and more considered in practice and care institution. You focused specifically on Germany and Denmark. Um, you performed as well a literature review trying to elicit the, the main factors that underlie good quality, teamwork and, and leadership. Once you were back in full swing, I was really impressed regarding the rigorous methods you applied. You even attempted to provide a methodological assessment of the sources uh, you had selected. I found this uh, really great. Your, more than that, your calm and professional way of communication, good in balancing your arguments and your independent wor way of working was really a great pleasure to work with you. You sent me uh, even new versions of your uh, drafts when my feedback was already overdue and for a long time awaited. Apologize for this. Very well done. All the best for the next steps in your career. <laughs> Mona. Mona. <laughs> Mona did her placement at Activa in Cologne, um, a German consultancy. And I believe I warned you around this time last year that doing a placement with a consultancy will be a very busy period for you. But you were quite easy and confident that you will manage it. And I think you managed very well. Huh? Because you have been meanwhile uh, as well offered a job at another consultancy, which I think is quite exceptional for a bachelor graduate. Your thesis provided an analysis of small hospitals between conflicting priorities of medical specialization and regional service provisioning. You focused on Germany and Austria. 
because it's a hot topic for uh, those countries who still have a large number of small hospitals compared to other EU countries. You suggested yourself and applied a framework from outside the health field, which I really appreciated, um, and you demonstrated in how you applied it to your analytic abilities. Very well done. Much success in your new job. Thank you. Diana, you had quite a difficult and late start to your placement, which was certainly not your fault. Once the topic on patient particip participation and your placement at the University of Liège uh, was agreed, um, and that within the context as well of another interreg uh, project on patients as a partner approach, the APPS project, you not only impressed me, but as well the, the colleagues in Liège, how you quickly you got acquainted uh, with the topic. The colleagues in Liège described you as a hard worker, very professional in your conduct. The thesis, patient participation in health policy making, governance, and health research, a scoping re review was of high quality. You provided an analysis of the German and EU situation and developed your own fusion framework as well in, for the analysis. Meanwhile, you have received as well a scholarship for uh, Erasmus Mundus, European Master in Health Economics and Management, which I think is well deserved. Congratulations to this achievement and your thesis. Excellent job, much success. <laughs> Isabel, Isabel, you did your placement at the Institute of Applied Telemedicine, IFAT, at the Heart and Diabetes Center in North Rhine-Westphalia, which you organized yourself with some administrative burdens in the very beginning, which you got out of your way. So that's an achievement in itself. Your work focused on the effectiveness and cost effectiveness of telemonitoring and telephone based health coaching on chronic heart failure patients. Telemedicine is an area of quite an interest uh, currently in German healthcare because some of the uh, lenders are currently experimenting with teleconsults, and particularly the North Rhine Westphalian Ministry currently in interested in how should we actually reimburse telemedicine services. So your work is well-placed, timely, and relevant. I valued your calm way of communication, especially at the very beginning when we needed to discuss some adaptations and obviously getting the administrations right. So well done. I wish you all the best for your future career. <laughs> Frida did an internal internship here on the topic of patient representation in nursing homes in the Netherlands and Germany. You not only compared the legislative provisions with regard to patient representation, but you tried to analyze how they actually work in practice as well. And doing this, you compared the Klienterat in Dutch and the Heimbeirat in German nursing homes. For this, you combined a literature review with qualitative interviews. And what really impressed me is how much you were determined to get those interviews conducted and done, um, which I think you succeeded in the end uh, very well. And on your way, I understood you may have improved your germ as well. <laughs> you concluded in your thesis that there was more decision power for the German Heimbeirat compared to the Klientenrat, but that both boards were in fact hampered by insufficient regulations regarding information disclosure. Very well done, congratulations. <laughs> Leon. Leon worked during his internal placements, placement here in Maastricht on an analysis of the delegated regulation regarding the implementation of falsified medicines directive, a topic that uh, has been addressed earlier. Falsified medicines have really become an, an increasing public health problem in recent years with gro global production lines and possibilities for online purchase of medicine. And the EU has reacted with a specific legislation to counteract that problem. Your work was specifically focused on the implementation in Belgium and Ireland 
and showed that the technical implementation of the verification systems for those medicine is still ongoing, but you expected or you saw the likelihood that, that, that the deadline for transposition will be met uh, in early 2019, uh, and that will imply that citizen, citizens will be assured of medicines that are accurate and original when being purchased, purchased at the pharmacy. Well done, much success in your career. Last but not least, Niklas. Niklas, your thesis is entitled Best Practice of Change Management. You specifically address the interface of change management between hospitals and long-term facilities, an area that is obviously as well getting more and more importance because of the demographic, demographic change and more and more frail elderly being institutionalized for their care. Your focus has been on the German situation. You elicit that an integrated information system like electronic health records and organizational inter integration for discharging and receiving institution are the most important uh, factors uh, to improve change management and that bad communication is the most important barrier to an effective and well-organized transition. You mastered during your placement very well your time, needing to take into account various commitments and nevertheless finalizing your thesis on time. Very well done, congratulations, and success with your master. The next group of one student was um, supervised by Bram de Boer, but uh, Timo will take his place. Um, and I would like to invite Esther Gerritsen. Um, Bram has uh, sent a couple of words and sentences to address you. Um, I must say I've been second grader um, to your work as well, so I know what has been the, the final product. On the other end, we have been in contact at the very beginning as well, because uh, you organized your placement uh, yourself in uh, Australia, and you came back saying, yeah, I want to work on intergenerational programs addressing dementia. And I thought, what the hell, who can supervise that kind of topic? But then somehow uh, I ran into Bram, and I, I have the feeling it has been a very fruitful collaboration. So I will read out what Bram um, has written. Esther did an internship at the University of South Australia in Adelaide. Her supervisors agreed that she was an excellent student. While on her internship, she was always quick to perform any task asked of her, often in a time frame that was quicker than expected. She provided great support in a wide variety of areas in an intergenerational project. 
Esther was always proactive in asking for feedback or clarifying where task required it. She was also extremely self-sufficient across all areas. She showed a great understanding of research integrity and ethical behavior, particularly managing diverse population groups. The research involved both children and older adults with cognitive impairments, to which she was always sensitive and considered in her approach. Although Esther is now busy with her master, She's also working on getting her thesis published. The supervisors from Australia indicated they would welcome Esther back any stage in the future. So who knows, knows what the future will bring to you. Esther, keep up the good work and congratulations, bra. group was supervised by my uh, colleague here in the front, Peter Schroeder, and the students were Frederike Ludwig, Melina Mbomba, Sophie Burger, Ruth Kemper, and Salina Thijssen. Nice to see you all again. Not all of you actually, Tessie's not here, she's graduating as well, but five of six you are here and it's very nice to see you again. I'm very happy that I can address you and uh, celebrate this day uh, with you today. First, I'd like to start with Melina. You came to the thesis group, Melina, to think big. You did not only want to work on European topics, but you had the globe in view, so you wanted to think globally. We uh, agreed on a testing a model of transferability. Uh, the difficult part of this is that I co-developed this model, so it was a little bit difficult, I guess, here and there to work with me on this because I was insisting and had our own ideas uh, on this, uh, but you managed very well and uh, succeeded in this, and you always kept not only very diligent, as every one of the group was, but also very calm and friendly, even when it was difficult to deal with me, so thank you for that very much, and uh, congratulations. Very well done. Frederike and Sophie, you both went to uh, Rode Public Policy in, uh, in Brussels. I just met uh, Sebastian this morning. He sends my regards. And again, he re-emphasized, as always, that you did very well in this placement. It was a pleasure uh, to work with you there. Um, both of you have integrated very well, and you could even go on a, a what is it called, like a day out with a, uh, yeah. to Spain with them. So you were, I think you also enjoyed it from their side, so it was a very good match, and it was very nice uh, to see. And thanks very much for being so good ambassadors to the Brussels world for us, because uh, Sebastian again has agreed to take new students this year, so you made a very good job. Yeah. Frederike... <laughs> no more personally, though. Frederike, you, you made some... Uh, late uh, changes to the, to the proposal and to the idea that I was a little bit concerned about that, but you kept cool and managed extremely well, um, and you showed very well that you can handle these kind of pressures and time pressures very well. That was very impressive, and ultimately uh, your new topic um, was very interesting, and I also learned a lot from this, uh, and uh, thank you very much for that. Sophie, you early on decided what your topic would be, and uh, you kept very close to your proposal, actually, and that is not really always the case. Uh, others know the story as well. You added some interviews or whatever, but these are minor details, let's say. Um, so your, your thesis was also very high quality. Um, you, you worked very well with a theory that was very uh, imp impressive. Uh, so you need, always knew very well what you did. Sometimes you said you were insecure, but ultimately, later I saw this is maybe only a, a role you play because you never were. You always knew what you wanted, you were very clear, <laughs> and in the end, uh, it was a great success. So, uh, success.
Ruth and Salina, I can uh, probably also address you first, both of you together, because you both worked on a topic that is uh, interesting in this region. You heard about Tiage and Dual and the issues that may rise here in this region. And you both took ethical accounts, which are close to my heart, so I was very grateful that you took up these uh, topics and uh, extend the cross-border care topics and cross-border health by uh, ethical perspective. Ruth, you scrutinized uh, my hometown Aachen and um, you, you did an interview there. So I learned a lot about what's actually going around in my own community that was very um, helpful and that you could bring in some insights from the uh, officials there. The ethical analysis are very new to this um, uh, field of work. So no one has really published about anything like this. So for both of you, that was very nice to see your thesis there. Um, both of you as well got invitations maybe to go to Budweiser. I think you didn't go ultimately, but the person who invited you there or said it would be nice, maybe you can connect with him in the future. Maybe something is in there for you. But first of all, again, Ruth, thank you very much for being in the group and also helping a lot with, uh, with the Skype uh, here and there, uh, as did Salina as well, but that was a good, good support. Thank you very much and congratulations for the thesis. Salina, your thesis was also very good and I could go more into detail now, but I don't want to. I want to focus on another point because you were the only one who interned with me, let's say, with the department. And there was uh, a great experience for me because you supported me quite a lot with research you have done and where you wrote exposés where I'm still working with. So uh, you're still very much missed. And so if you don't know, if you have days off, or whatever, please uh, consider how we can continue all our collaboration because it was great success. So you worked very well in setting up the group and coordinating the group. You helped uh, me with my research. You did a very innovative thesis and that turned out very well. So uh, congratulations very much for that and also that you dared or that I could dare to speak Dutch with you all the time. That was a nice opening for me. So uh, thanks for that very much. <laughs> so thanks all very, very much for this very nice uh, experience we, I had. I hope you also uh, kind of enjoyed it over the last or the half year there that we had regular meetings every two weeks. And uh, yeah, so let's celebrate today. The next group was supervised by Elina Mittenis, but um, Peter will uh, uh, talk to you in her, um, on her behalf. And I would like to ask Elinka Radu and Asha Abdul Kadir to come forward. As Elina cannot be here today, she's teaching in Latvia. I think she asked me to read out the following text to you. My dear thesis students, my excuses not for not being able to be here for you today due to my duties abroad. Elinka. Being Ilinka's thesis supervisor, I got to know her as a very ambitious and career-oriented student. She always wore a smile and was full of joy. Ilinka learned a lot during the thesis period. She managed to collect the data among Romanian mothers, analysis it with uh, SPSS, and to write up a good thesis. During the same period, she managed to experience placement in London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine, and next to that, also another internship in London. You did really great, Ilinka. Congratulations with the bachelor degree, and I hope we stay in touch. As Asha's supervisor, I got to know her as being curious, open, and uh, invested student. Asha can also work independently and has her own working style. 
I can say that during the thesis period, we learned a lot from each other. Nevertheless, Asha worked with quantitative data of Ukrainian patients in SPSS and developed skills in analyzing and interpreting the findings. You did it. You are graduating today and wish you all the best with your future steps. The next group was supervised by Helmut Brandt, who is not present, but Kasia should be present and will address you. Um, the students are Artyoms Kakans, Doreen van de Vrie, Jana Kruger, Nina Linde, and Ramon Lotz. Okay, so I, I am really very glad that I can substitute Professor Helmut Brandt and uh, read a short address to you, Nina. So the best information on the web is useless when you cannot access it because of your disability. Nina looked at the websites of National Contact Point for cross-border health information from this point of view. The results are sobering. Still too much to do. <laughs> Thank you very much, and I congratulate you for reaching this stage and to pursue your future in the master program that you probably have selected. Thank you very much. So we're starting the second basket, so the drinks are coming closer, yeah? Don't worry. Yeah. Okay, next group. Supervised by Angela Brandt, will be addressed by Kasia. A lot of students, I'm not sure if everybody's here. Julia Peterson, Laila Almutairi, Lisanne Meyer, Lorina Lamsay, Pauline Mignot, Rocheda Greenwood, Soli Levy, Hannah Sievers, and Lauren Timizzi. Hello. <laughs> so again, I, I have a privilege of addressing the students that I didn't have a privilege to supervise, but I'm happy to substitute Professor Angela Brandt and give the address that she has prepared for you. So let me start with Julia. Who can learn from whom? Julia had a look at innovations and innovative products from developing countries that might help us here in Europe to save time and money in the healthcare systems. But only few countries make this process easy. There is still much to do. The title of your thesis was Differences in Barriers and Facilitators Regarding the Implementation of Frugal Health Innovations in the EU Between Member States. Congratulations. And our next graduate, Lorraine. Uh, what would you think if it would be possible to check if a medicine is good for you on a virtual twin of your own before you have to swallow the pill? 
That is the future scenario that might be much sooner, as you expect, was analyzed by your Laureen, making first steps into cyber healthcare. <laughs> Title, Personalized Medicine, Translation of the Virtual Twin into EU Health Systems. Congratulations, so you really take us into the future. <laughs> Uh, Pauline, what do, uh, why do more and more people getting obese? Are the reasons in our genes or in our environment? Pauline looked at the interaction of both called epigenomics and found out that there is an issue, especially in early lifestyle. So be aware, treat your baby well to keep it slim in life. <laughs> The role of epigenomics in early life on the incidence of obesity later in life, a narrative literature review. Congratulations. <laughs> and now we move on to Rosheda. Okay, how long do you have to wait for the newest medical technology that might save your life depends on the regulation in your country. How do different countries in the US, EU, and India deal with this problem was the topic of your work. And how to regulate if the new device is not a regular product as we are used to, but is a software? Was that what you were studying? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Medical device regulation in EU, uh, India, and the US, a comparative analysis of the authorization, post market requirements, and their barriers in the EU, US, and India, with a brief analysis of software as medical device. So it sounds really extremely interesting <laughs> and difficult. Congratulations. And Hannah, so that one size fits all is out of date. <laughs> and it is only true for clothes that we wear, but not also for healthcare. So we might look all quite similar, but when it comes to diseases, we differ a lot. Intelligent IT systems making use of big amounts of personalized data might be a solution, as Hannah argues in her thesis. So the title of that thesis was Personalized Medicine in the EU, the challenge of integrating big data and ICT solutions. So again, all these theses are really very sophisticated. <coughs> Thank you, congratulations, and all the best for the future academic and professional life. Don't go anywhere, Kasia. I don't go. I have no? two students of my own. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and those are Leonie Eiler and Miriam Shedadi.
So hello, I'm very happy to see you. And I would like to share with you that these are the students that every supervisor would wish to have. <laughs> I really enjoyed the supervision and the regular meetings we had together in person and online. Both of them are very motivated. They have a passion and drive. So you can imagine that it was a pleasure to work with them. They also had a drive for scientific excellence. So it was very interesting to see that the feedback I gave, and if I even wanted to stretch them a little bit to look for things which were more difficult, they did it and sometimes challenged me and even wanted different or more. So that was really very good. I enjoyed working with you. And uh, the work that they were concentrated on and that now it is a product of our uh, work together was antimicrobial resistance, looking through the One Health approach <coughs> and comparative analysis of different countries, and that was Leonie. And then the childhood vaccination of Roma populations in Europe, what works, what doesn't work, and she took two case studies of two countries, Slovakia and Romania. And both works are high quality papers, and I'm very proud of the work that you have done and analyzed with the help of the host organization, which is a European Public Health Alliance. Thank you very much, it was a pleasure. And the students are Marta Gilbert and Tamara Radenkovic. Hello, welcome. Um, Hans could uh, not be present, unfortunately. And uh, Hans uh, Dupont works at the Mondrian Institute. It's uh, addiction prevention, as addiction prevention unit of the Mondrian Institute, Mental Health uh, Institute in the region. And uh, Martha, and uh, you, you went both as interns to that institute, and he sent me a couple of words, very few, and a bit cryptic, I must say. I couldn't get, um, I didn't understand it fully, so um, maybe we can discuss it later on, what, he, what you think he, he meant by it. He writes, he wrote, he says, Martha and Tamara are diligent students who have handled my feedback very well during the process. Well, that's clear. But uh, don't expect him to make detailed theoretical considerations, but rather to have an unassuming mentality. Now, that puzzles me. So you may, we may talk about that later, and I'll, we'll, we'll give him a call. But he also is... Uh, um, thinks that you, would, you both would be an asset to any future employer. So I guess he was very, very satisfied with your uh, performance uh, while being there. I have read your thesis too, and uh, I was maybe perhaps a bit too critical. Uh, uh, reason for that may lie in the topic, I think. Uh, both projects are on the prevention of alcohol abuse in the elderly. Now, if I look around here. No. <laughs> <laughs> when checking on what they define as elderly, it is 55 plus, my God. No. <laughs> I may have felt a little, little tackled by that. And um, to have these elderly reflect on their own drinking, that was part of you, of your uh, project, uh, what they propose was what they what you propose as a strategy for an intervention. So 
elderly have to reflect on their drinking. Martha investigated whether a prevention program called MOTI4 aimed at excessive marijuana use among young people, adolescents, could be adapted to drinking among people like me. Uh, Hans Dupont once asked me uh, to take part in that MOTI4 in the pilot study and um, simply to see how the program will work. I declined, of course. Uh, I'm still in denial. Tamara has worked on, has worked together with Rob Bovens, uh, a person I know as well. He's the brother of uh, the governor, so-called governor. And, well, he's a local chap, actually, who I meet only during the carnival, where he's already uh, <laughs> somewhat uh, uh, intoxicated. But still, <laughs> he, he's trying to have us oldies to cut down drinking in a popular movement called ICPAS, which I translate as I resign. Now, my response when he asked me to join his team, his club, was me resign? Never. <laughs> well, anyway, uh, congratulations with your uh, performance and your thesis and your diploma, and uh, um, good luck in your future. Uh, and Dada. Thank Thanks. You. The next group, supervised by Esther Slitz, and I would like to ask to come forward Annika Kramer, Anne Wenzel, Svenja Moser, and Laura Oostenbach. So it's, it's really great to see you here. I saw you not so long ago, and uh, we had a lovely chat how, about your experiences, and I'd like to uh, congratulate you with all the work you all did really an excellent job in with all your topics but I have some words for each of you so Annika you went to Spain to the University of Granada you arranged it completely on your own which I think is really brave it shows really that you're competent in taking initiatives pursuing your own goals uh, you also wanted to learn Spanish which I think you, uh, you had a lot of opportunity to practice there. And uh, you worked during your placement on uh, the prevention of cardiovascular disease among elderly, and you took really an interesting approach by seeing whether the Mediterranean diet would work in the UK as well. So it was also a challenge for you to see how that would actually turn out, but I think it was an excellent job you did in bringing the opportunities for the UK uh, together. Uh, so also the host institution was really pleased with your work. I quote them, Annika demonstrated superior research skills and she possesses strong interpersonal skills. This was just one of the things to mention. So it's really great what you did and I think you were a great ambassador for us because we also can send new students over there. Um, also, you showed at the bachelor conference that you really were knowledgeable and you became a real public health professional. You had a wonderful presentation that really had an impact and people will remember. So congratulations. <laughs> Anne, uh, you, were, uh, uh, you went to Kosovo, to Pristina, at, and you worked at the National Institute of Public Health. And it was 
really great. The topic I was also very enthusiastic, enthusiastic. It posed a lot of challenges, especially in the beginning. And the great thing about it is, is that occupational health in Kosovo is really at the beginning stages. So in one way, you offered them a great opportunity to contribute to that field. But on the other hand, it was challenging because there was not really a lot of uh, published materials. So you had to do additional interviews, which is actually more advanced than for a regular bachelor thesis. So I think that's excellent that you were able to include that. Um, so also, um, the host institution was really pleased about you. They said, Anne did an excellent job, and her study will be valuable and useful contribution for future undertakings in the occupational health arena in our country. And they even asked you to publish your, uh, your material or your thesis. So I think that's a wonderful opportunity for you. Well done. Svenja, you went to Brussels to the to CPMA, Standing Committee of European Doctors, and you worked on the uh, reduction of industrial trans fats to decrease the risk of cardiovascular disease. A mouthful. <laughs> and you looked at, uh, you did a policy analysis on EU level to look into what can the EU do actually uh, to tackle this problem. Um, also, this was a challenging topic because you needed to do uh, additional interviews to actually get a hold of what different stakeholders were thinking. Why is everybody agreeing that something should be done and nothing is being done? Um, I enjoyed our discussions also towards the end, like how can you <laughs> capture this, this topic really well and how can you show this? And your host supervisor said, Svenja was an excellent member of our team uh, and that she did really a good job. The topics she worked on were certainly not limited to her thesis. I think they really stressed how um, wonderful you were in being willing and contributing to all kinds of things that were being offered. And I saw that also in the thesis group. You were there with a positive attitude, really a member of our team. So. Congratulations. <laughs> Laura, um, you went to Australia to Deakin University um, and you worked on the impact of nutrition claims on food choices and obesity. And from the very first meeting until the last one, I experienced you as very enthusiastic and passionate about the topic. I remember our lively discussions on how to get this to the level that we wanted. And I think you were always open uh, uh, to receive anything going on in discussions, but you were also very willing to contribute give, by giving feedback to the other students, helping them to think about a different solution. So that's really wonderful uh, how you uh, collaborated. You submitted a high quality thesis and that was also recognized by the host institution because you're going to publish your work as well. So the, congratulations about that. And they said, um, Laura showed great commitment during her placement, was extremely dedicated to her work, interacted well as part of her team here and volunteered to do some extra data analysis for other projects. Also for me, it was a pleasure to work with you and I think you will do well. Congratulations. Frank van der Baan, Lola Teeuwen, Laura Stens, Maartje Muskens, Tamika Marcos, Thomas Otten en Nora Oikarainen.
God, where to begin? Uh, so many brilliant students this year, and uh, even an extra one from last year. Uh, Maatje, uh, all of you left Maastricht in February, and we kept in contact through Skype sessions, all except Tamika, uh, who went to the GGD, uh, and joined another thesis group, actually, a uh, master level thesis group, uh, but that is a detail. All of them had a topic related to the dreadful human tendency to imbibe, over imbibe in pleasure seeking uh, substances and activities. Uh, Tamika not, and I will address Tamika first. Uh, you're a very conscientious and able student and you have done a great job. I really was impressed. Uh, from the data entry in the beginning, it took you a lot of steam to actually get prepare the data. We didn't know that in advance that you had to uh, do a lot of preparatory work. Uh, but all the way up to statistical analysis, which you did very well as well. Question was, of your thing was, whether poverty was related to certain health outcomes in a very... Uh, young kids, it, it's a lucky cohort, maybe some of you uh, in the area know it, it's uh, 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 a birth cohort, uh, very young kids. Uh, you laid the groundwork also for the other student, the master students, and master students have much less time uh, on their hands uh, to finish a thesis than um, uh, EPH students. So you're lucky, but also unlucky maybe for that reason. Um, thank you, also on behalf of Sureta, the, your su local supervisor, and uh, by the way, did you read the recent uh, report by the Dutch uh, uh, Council, uh, res uh, uh, Advice Council to the, to the government? Uh, that, uh, they suggest to quit all efforts to reduce social inequalities uh, in health, uh, because they don't they don't work. Well, anyway, that was Tamika. Um, three, three chaps went to Barcelona and enjoyed life there, of course. Uh, Marcia already previously, uh, previous year. She looked into uh, the use of ecological momentary assessment, a technique uh, to uh, research uh, substance use. Um, on the spot, so to say, and, tested, and she tested it among a few respondents. Outcome was positive, and it should be definitely be integrated in a selective prevention program, such as the MOTI4 of the other uh, student who was here, Martha Gilbert. Um, Laura and Thomas uh, joined the research staff at the addiction clinic of the University of Barcelona this, this year. Thomas, you had to reshuffle your uh, project once you got there uh, and was able to pick up a project on the interesting topic of uh, stigmatization and uh, in relation to problematizations of the concept of addiction and uh, so called models of addiction more or less. Uh, 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 a very inspiring work and I will definitely will pick up on your work uh, in uh, years to come. Really interesting. Uh, a lot of research is being published nowadays uh, uh, on this issue as well in the, after you've gone, after you stop. Maybe you should look into publication. Laura was a bit more lucky uh, going there and being there. Uh, she produced a very elegant review on the use of mHealth applications in substance use uh, and a very thorough analysis it was. I was very impressed. Uh, uh, but what would you expect of a German academic? You know, it's a very, very, very good work, brilliant work. I will pass this on to my, the people I know in the uh, of your course, you passed it on to the people in Barcelona, that, those who you worked for. But um, uh, it's a very useful thing also for people at my department uh, who are into this, these things. Frank uh, went to Lisbon and took... Uh, a look at the phenomenon of drug use in prisons. 
there's a lot of drug use going on, but also in prisons, so there's nothing wrong, but there's even more drug use going on in prisons than outside prisons. Society has decided to outlaw certain substances, which make trafficking and production a profitable business. Uh, a large number of people in prisons are users themselves, uh, or become so after entering prisons, but they also are users before they get in there, and that poses penitentiaries, of course, with a huge problem. Uh, people at EMCDDA, which is a European monitoring center for, uh, for drug uh, and uh, drug addiction, uh, they were very happy with your work, and I hope we can pull off a nice publication from it. Uh, uh, Eola has been has be given credit for organizing the, the sessions, uh, uh, the Skype sessions, thanks uh, uh, on behalf of us, all of us. Your placement was at the EU offices in Luxembourg, and I had the feeling that they kept you very busy. Um, but this has, of course, not affected your work. The topic you looked into is called the policy paradox, or the, the room paradox, named after Robin Room. It's a, a one of the hotshots in the area. Uh, it has to do with the inverse relationship between acceptability uh, of policy measures on alcohol to control drinking uh, in society and their effectivity. So the popularity uh, is inversely related to uh, their effectivity. As already became clear at the individual level in my own case, uh, policies that are really effective in bringing down drinking are not very popular or easy to implement. Nora is not here, is she? No. Uh, she went to Australia and um, she made her own arrangement and of course uh, she's a, a a blonde, tall, blonde, uh, sporty girl, and it's always uh, made me think, you know, uh, why do you choose to go uh, at a, to a university close to the beach? Uh, <laughs> but soon these stereotypical doubts vanished, and she did a great job um, uh, on a data set investigating prisoners' attitude to naloxone. Now, naloxone is an opioid antagonist. It actually makes sure that a person who takes a naloxone does not have any positive consequences from taking opiates like heroin. Uh, now, but they also are life, it's a life-saving drug uh, against overdose. Now, she did a, a great job on the uh, data set and uh, I think that will lead to a publication as well although I'm not inv personally involved in that, but um, uh, they probably will uh, do that. By the way, she is uh, at King's College. She was accepted at King's College in London, uh, the addiction master, which is uh, quite uh, another feat to maybe to mention here. To all of you, thank you for your trust. You put in me as a supervisor. You are a very powerful group very bright and critical minds, and I'm really proud of you. And uh, wish you all the best in whatever work or endeavor you take a study you embark on in the future. Okay, thank you.
Next group, supervised by Eva Pilot. And I would like to invite Anna Wurm, Fanny Monet, Giorgio Cisari, Leonie Marienhagen, Malte Janssen, Marie Westerby, Robert Thiesmeyer, who graduated cum laude, and Sigrid van Dorp. Great. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, what we are going to do, um, we have two supervisors in this group because uh, I was on pregnancy leave half of the time and um, Pretty was so kind and uh, took over the group during the time. So I also invited her to um, shall we share as well the, the talk to you. Um, Kasha said before that she had the best group and was really eager and it was really a pleasure working with her, but I think we think the same. <laughs> and we definitely had an excellent group. We had lots of really productive discussions and we enjoyed that very much. And um, it's really an honor and a pleasure to um, address each of you and I'm really happy or we are really happy that everyone performed so well and achieved um, what you have achieved. So we will start with Anna. Anna, you moved to Lisbon in Portugal, although before you wanted to go somewhere really different, but we found a nice spot for you in Portugal. I think you enjoyed your, your thesis and uh, placement very much. You worked on decision tools in health equity policy within the European Union, um, and this was part of a European um, project called um, Euro Healthy. And um, you looked in advanced knowledge of policies with the highest potential to enhance health and health equity across Europe. Um, Anna's work provides um, valuable input for the project and it was a really great pleasure to have her in the thesis group and um, we are both very proud what you have achieved and we wish you all the best for the future. <laughs> Fanny went um, to Ontago in New Zealand, so a little bit off of Europe. <laughs> and um, to study um, how university students experience cognitive enhancing drugs for academic performances. So also a topic which is really relevant um, in Europe currently. Um, her thesis is not only very interesting, but also provides um, some very practical insights uh, for designing and implementing prevention interventions. Uh, and again, we are both really happy and uh, wish you all the best for the future and congratulations on the work. Um, Leonie went to India, also a little bit off <laughs> uh, of Europe. Um, you studied um, public urban green spaces in Pune in India with the support of the Bharti Vidyapit University and the Environmental Education Institute there. You present, um, you probably spend lots of hours in the, for, uh, in the park areas under the hot sun and uh, hopefully, <laughs> or shadow. <laughs> um, and uh, with interviewing the visitors of the parks and gained great insights into their experiences and awareness of how to use the parks and the levels um, involved. Um, her study builds insights and perspectives that are useful on a local level, as well as contributes to the recent uh, partnership between the Netherlands and India towards building sustainable cities. And it was a great pleasure as well working with you together as with everyone. But um, it was really uh, very interesting as well to, to debate and see um, how, we, how the group came together and um, spent for the, the, the thesis groups. Although sometimes it was really a hustle in India in particular also to find the right location for the internet. But you all managed really well. Uh, so the next students will be addressed by Pretty. <laughs> Hi guys, it's really nice to see you again. Um, Malta, uh, embedded within the Humboldt University in Berlin, you studied the role of social media and geospatial approaches to research and mental health surveillance in times of disaster by drawing upon Twitter messages from residents of New York City before, during, and after Hurricane Katrina. Uh, that took up a lot of space on your cover page as well. Hurricane Sandy. Sandy? Oh yeah, sorry, Hurricane Sandy. Uh, both we and the colleagues working with you in Berlin were really impressed with your work and by the enthusiastic dedication that you showed and the thesis very well done. And we were also very impressed by the grace and depth with which, with which you handled the questions during the uh, EPH uh, symposium or the conference. Uh, you, were in the, in, you were an integral part and source of continued support for the thesis group as well. Congratulations. Um, Giorgio, you also went to Berlin for your research 
um, where you studied the use of social media for mental health surveillance in post-disaster settings. And while your data focused upon Twitter messages associated with Hurricane Sandy in New York City, uh, your study holds valuable lessons for many other settings, including Europe. Um, you displayed tremendous growth and resilience in your time there and uh, in engaging with the challenging task that was presented to you. Really well done, and congratulations. Robert, uh, you were based at the Bharati Vidya Peet Institute of Environment, Education and Research in Pune, India, where you studied public urban green spaces in the city. You overcame challenges presented by the summer heat as well as language differences, which can be quite substantial. Um, and you reached out to over 200 visitors in the park to study their usage and use accessibility. Your study highlights important lessons and implications for local planning and management, as well as international partners uh, towards recreating Pune as a smart city. Uh, you were also very active in the thesis group meetings and you contributed really enthusiastically to the works of the other members of the group. And for that, we thank you and congratulations, all the best, and we really look forward to seeing what you do next. Uh, Seagrid worked closely at the RIVM, I'm not going to try to pronounce the full form of that, um, to study the Dutch system for the surveillance and response of vector borne diseases. Your research pointed at important opportunities um, for improvement within the system, particularly in the integration of expert knowledge outside the official response structures. It was a real pleasure to work with you and to have your enthusiastic involvement in the thesis group, and I really look forward to working with you on the Global Health Master's program as well. Um, Marie, for her thesis research, explored the benefits of um, satellite-based earth observation in the mitigation of air pollution's impact on health. Um, she highlighted the role of, that can have in uh, harmonizing data on air quality around the globe, as well as pointed out opportunities for improvements in European policies that could drastically influence how emissions are dealt with within the continent. She worked with the Central Bureau for Statistics, uh, CBS, in the Netherlands, who provided her with full access to their databases for the study. Marie, you were tireless and creative in your work and an asset to the team both at the CBS and here at the university. And now it's a real pleasure also to work with you on the Master Global Health Program. Congratulations.
the next group was uh, supervised by Thomas Kraft, but will be addressed by Eva. And I would like to invite Adele Barlasina, Ben Menzies, and Nicola Bauer. Yeah, I have the honor um, to um, give you some notes um, which uh, Thomas Kraft um, sent over. He can't be present because um, a Chinese delegation is in town, and um, it's a perfect uh, way because you also went, um, Adele, to the Chinese Academy of Sciences and you enjoyed your time over there. So um, I hope you don't mind that uh, I just go and read uh, the notes Thomas prepared for you guys. Adele went for her placement to the Chinese Academy of Sciences in Beijing. Her research on mercury contamination in Arctic seafood might, at the first moment, sound a bit far-fetched for European public health, but Adele convincingly argued in her well-written thesis that with the current climate change and the opening of the Northern Sea Road, the environmental health effects will further increase and therefore need specific attention. While being at the Chinese Academy, Adele made full use of the rich academic and cultural opportunities provided, um, including spatial training, um, workshop in remote sensing and GIS, and attending international conferences. And she's even considering to go back to China for her master research and will be very welcome at the Academy again. Very well done, Adele. <laughs> Nicola. Uh, focused her research on antimicrobial resistance and meat consumption in the EU, a highly relevant and also highly political topic considering the interests of the meat producing industry. With her research, Nicola proved um, strong analytical skills and provided a thoroughly designed thesis. During the thesis group phase, Nicola showed her outstanding social skills by supporting and motivating peers' valuable contribution to the group discussions. I really enjoyed working with Nicola during the thesis phase. Congratulations to the excellent work. I have no more groups. Excellent. Then I would, before we have drinks, I would like to invite Louise Schluter et al. So I guess a group of students who are going to <laughs> say something. <laughs> Dear sophisticated students, patient professors, proud parents, smart siblings, and fearless friends. Last night we were strolling for one last time through Maastricht, um, the city that has been our study bubble for the last three years. Um, perfectly and annoyingly small at the same time, but with lots of cozy places to calm down and likewise lots of events to tune us up. Both was urgently needed. Sometimes we needed to escape the horror of maybe unnecessarily seeming <laughs> multiple choice exams or group gatherings that just did not deserve the name group work. Um, some people might say in group work you learn 5% about the topic and 95% about how to do the entire project on your own without getting frustrated. The tension is only released once the grading comes out and you realize, well, we managed somehow, and in the end it was not all that bad. Still, I feel that the world's grading system we were born into is often not really evaluating what we know, what we can do, and what we're capable of. Thus, in this student master system, it becomes most important to be taught by true masters. Well, we certainly found some here at Maastricht University. And let us present examples to you. First, Inge Haukes, the mother of all first year Beppies who took us under her wings and guided us through the emotional and organizational success of arriving at university. Valeria Lima Passos, the one and only 
who with her Brazilian charm and unconditional love, we felt, made statistics more attractive. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> <laughs> David Townens, our personal Santa Claus, as we call him, who let us think outside the box and question everything we know or what we thought we knew. Helmut Brandt, uh, the man who did not need or use any slides to make his lectures interesting. <laughs> Paul Lemons, enthusiastically trying to get us involved with alcohol and drugs by <laughs> criticizing or also <coughs> trying <coughs> them. Peter Schröderbeck, telling us how to save the world ethically. Uh, Timo Clemens, giving up all his free time to help us organize our own lives and placement. Kai Michelsen, uh, <laughs> rocking, sorry, no, 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 rocking the healthcare politics as well as the amazing German accent. <laughs> and Matt Commers, showing up at lectures in cowboy boots and cowboy hats to let us understand the spirit of the US healthcare system even better. So let us thank all of our professors for having taught us what they know. Let, thank you also to all of the parents, uh, family and friends who are here today, uh, but have been supporting us all throughout this bumpy journey of what we call universe, uh, studies at university. And finally, let's thank each other, our fellow students, uh, for sticking around, supporting each other, even though even some tough, even, Ula, <laughs> supporting each other through some tough epidemiology and statistic times and making the Bepi spirit uh, such a nice and comfortable place. But this is it. Uh, we are done and for most of us it is uh, the second time that we have to fly out of the nest. But let us think of it this way. Great things lay ahead of us. Whilst, Europe, whilst Europe's population is getting unhealthier, older and sicker, we have now acquired some of the skills necessary and have the ability to, in, to be innovative and potentially find solutions to the many existing public health problems. And as our beloved ex-program coordinator, as well as, as well as Professor Kai Michel said, uh, innovation is always sexy. <laughs> that's a quote, that's not me, it's a quote. <laughs> Um, so go out, fly away out of the nest, uh, leave this peppy bubble, be innovative and sexy, and do your best on every day, because maybe we can make a difference and change a very small thing that may make an entire population healthier. So think globally, act locally, and congratulations all to your bachelors. Thank you very much. How was it to be on the front of the lecture room instead of on the other side? It's pretty nice. Yeah, is it? Well, we'll still have jobs available, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, will, I would like to finish uh, this session. I would like to congratulate all, of, congratulate all of you on behalf of the Faculty of Health, Medicine and Life Sciences. Please join everybody for drinks right out these doors. So follow the students and you will get, uh, hopefully, Alcoholic drinks or without, depends on what Paul has uh, arranged. <laughs> um, so congratulations to all of you and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you.